Coming up on TPI. He started, you know, sexually touching me. You know, it actually went on to actual abuse. Started sleeping with me. You know, told me this is what uncles do with their um, nieces. Hello and welcome to TPI. We hope you're ready for a great show. Let's not waste any time and jump right into it. Simi Salai Kai gets personal with Sid Roth, the host of the popular program, It's Supernatural. A scary experience with demons introduced Sid to a paranormal world earlier on in his life. Yet he encountered a power so great, he hasn't been the same since. Take a look. Sid Roth is the talk show host of It's Supernatural, and the founder of Messianic Vision. For the past 40 years, Sid has devoted his life to helping Jews discover that Jesus is the Messiah. He speaks all around the world, teaching people about the power and promises of Jesus and how to access miracles, signs, and wonders. Well, I have a question. Why do you think people are so fascinated with things of the supernatural? Because God has put, according to the Bible, eternity in our hearts and therefore there's something inside of us that wants to know the invisible God whether we know it or not it's planted inside of us and I know why I'm so interested in the supernatural different people have different reasons uh, first of all uh, I'm Jewish and um, before I became a believer in Jesus, I was involved in the dark side of the supernatural, the new age, the occult. Uh, and most people don't know about the supernatural, the good or the bad. But uh, before I came to know Jesus, in fact, that's my story, uh, I got in so deep that I didn't know anyone that could help me. And a Christian said to me, there's stronger power in the name of Jesus than the power that's pulling you under, Sid. Pray to God in Jesus' name. And I went home that night, not caring whether I would live or die because life was too hard. I don't know, Simi, if you can relate to that. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if you can relate to that, but the truth of the matter is, we humans have a breaking point. And I was at a breaking point and I prayed. I didn't pray a, uh, a classic Billy Graham prayer. I prayed from my heart though. And the prayer was, Jesus, help. I didn't know about repentance. I didn't know about any, anything like that. Jesus, help. And the next morning, I was flooded with a supernatural love. I was flooded with supernatural peace. And the demon, and it was a demon that was inside of me, and I knew it. I wanted it out. I didn't want Jesus. I just wanted it out. It was gone. It could not take the name of Jesus. And I've followed him ever since. And what I found, Simi, is uh, people say to me, Sid, you, you, you're just so, you're, you're in too deep for, in the supernatural. Well, you see, I was in too deep in the supernatural of the devil, and I can't get deep enough in the supernatural of God. Uh, and, and so the reason I'm so interested in the supernatural is that's God's plan A for evangelism. And we don't use God's plan A, we use B to Z, but plan A works. Even with Jewish people that I love to share the gospel with, uh, it says in the book of Corinthians, the Jew requires a sign. And what I found, Simi, is when I stand up and start operating in what are known as words of knowledge, and Jewish people get physically healed, I have their undivided attention to preach the gospel as long as I want. <laughs> These miracles you talk about, have you seen them? Have you witnessed them with your own I, eyes? I have either witnessed with my eyes or interviewed people that they have happened to every single thing Jesus did multiple times. And I'm, I'm convinced, as a matter of fact, right now some people are being healed. And I'll tell you what you're being healed of. You have arthritis in your fingers. If you uh, are carpal tunnel, anything you need in your hands, uh, and, and also pain is disappearing right now, especially in your back. Uh, this is what you must do right now. If you have a backache, stand up, bend over, and you'll bend into your healing. If you have a neck ache, 
what are you going to do? Figure it out from the last instructions. You know, it's easy. <laughs> Amen. But, but, uh, but, but see, that's the type of thing that it's really available to everyone. Uh, and uh, I, it, but you see, we're not taught. And faith comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. In fact, uh, Simi, I'm, I'm going to tell people, if it's okay with you, one of the two of the greatest weapons that are not used nearly enough that are available to every Christian watching. Tell us. Weapon number one, the blood of Jesus. If you had any idea the power in the blood of Jesus, do you know if there was a demon in front of you and you could see this demon and you say, the blood of Jesus, and I, I do it like that, by the way, with an attitude. <laughs> the blood of Jesus, this is what the demon will do. It starts shaking and going back like that. But it's a liar. And the only thing it has over someone is a lie. And so it'll, you will think, because you don't see it, nothing's going on. But the blood of Jesus is one of the most powerful weapons you have. And then the other is speaking in supernatural languages, tongues. Now, many Christians know about speaking in tongues, but they don't know what Paul said about speaking in tongues. This is what Paul said. He said, I pray in tongues more than any man. He said, I pray without ceasing. Amen. Only the move of God. It, it, and we're coming into such a move of God's uh, uh, power and spirit uh, because you know why? You, you don't have to be a mental giant to see that the world is getting more and more evil. But the darker the world gets, the light, brighter the light is going to shine. And that's a cliche, but it's also true. And his light, arise, shine, for his light has come. And the glory of the Lord is ready to fill the earth and especially fill your body. And uh, so stop feeling sorry for yourself. Hold your head up. Recognize the creator of the universe loves you will never leave you and lives inside of you and let them use you. You know, there is no distance in the spirit. God can touch you and do something miraculous in your life right now where you are. Just receive it. The woman in our next story was sexually assaulted many times. Those experiences almost caused her to have an emotional breakdown, but she found a way to get her life back and is now helping other victims become victors. Here's her story. Chinyere Eyo is a wife and a mother who is on a mission to reach out to people who have been hurt sexually. This mission was born from Chinyere's personal experience. It all began when she was abused at the tender age of four. One of my uncles came to visit. Nobody was home but he used that opportunity to sexually abuse me. And I didn't really know how to broach the subject with my mom. And I just told her, mommy, my bum bum is spinning me. And, you know, she waved it off, told her, okay, to be better. Just two years after that, another uncle came to live with Chinyere's family. My father introduced him to us. And from then he started, you know, sexually touching me in the presence, you know, of my parents. They didn't know what was going on. He was using me to um, stimulate himself. You know, it actually um, went on to actual abuse. Started sleeping with me, you know, told me this is what uncles do with their um, uh, um, nieces. The sexual abuse became a frequent affair. He would use every opportunity when my parents were not in or when they were not in the room to make me touch him or, um, or get to, you know, to touch me. Sometimes at night, you know, he would come to me at night, wake me up and sleep with me. And it went on from six until I was about 13. After eight years of being repeatedly abused, Chinyere decided she had had enough. I remember that night, he came to me and tapped me as usual, you know, and I told him no. Of course, it was in the night he didn't want to make a scene and, you know, he left. But later in the day, you know, he kept on, you know, cajoling, telling me, begging me and all that. And I just told him, I'm not doing this again. Even though the physical abuse had stopped, Chinyere struggled with depression and low self-esteem. 
It got so bad that there, there were times I would think of killing myself. There were times I would ask myself if I died, who would come to my burial? Because I felt that bad. I felt there was nothing good about myself. I, I felt nobody loved me. I just felt that anybody looking at me would see how dirty I was. I felt dirty all the time. Chinyere continued to suffer in silence. But when she turned 19, she gained admission into a university. There, she got a new beginning when she gave her heart to Jesus. After I made that decision and I said the sinner's prayer, you can't imagine how, how free. For the first time in my life, I knew I was doing the right thing, you know, and I just kept on saying, Father, if you could do anything with me, I'm ready, I'm available. But one day, tragedy struck again. I was going for a meeting at night. I took a bad decision and entered a path road at night, not knowing that there was a rapist lurking, you know, in the dark. And immediately I felt that hand. I was like, God, what's happening? He dragged me into the bushes and there I was raped. You won't believe two weeks after that, I was coming from another fellowship off campus with two of my friends and we came across this dark path on the road, not knowing that someone was there and again, I was, I was raped. Chinyere's heart was filled with so much pain and anger. I didn't go to fellowship, I didn't read the Bible. You know, I was just, I was, I was struggling with my faith. I couldn't imagine that a good God could allow this happen to his child. But as months passed, Chinyere felt God's love reaching out to her. She yielded and allowed Jesus to heal her heart and take her pain away. Soon, someone also wanted Chinyere's heart. We had been friends for about four years before, and he said, Chinyere, you're the one I want to spend the rest of my And I said, look, at that time, God had already told me I would, he, he wanted me to use my story to bless lives. He wanted me to share my story. And so that first meeting, I told him, hey, okay, you want to marry me? I've been abused, I've been raped, and I want to stand on the pulpit and share my story and bless lives. And that was just how I said it. And he was taken aback initially, and he kept quiet. And then after some time, he said, as long as I can also share your story on the pulpit. And I was like, this is not real. <laughs> This cannot be real. I, I, did, it was, I, didn't, I didn't expect that. And so I told him, okay, look, just give me space. I can't deal with this now. You know, it was all like a dream. You know, prayed about it. And um, that's how we eventually got married. With the support of her husband, Chinyere started the Sexual Offenses Awareness and Victims Rehabilitation Initiative in 2008. During the period of my healing, I also did a lot of research and I found out that I wasn't, a, I wasn't one in a million because statistics tell us that one in every three to four girls will be sexually abused before age 18 and one in six boys will also be abused. And so I said, okay, now let's start this NGO. We will create awareness. We will advocate on issues that has to do with child sexual abuse, but then also we will build capacity of the children and teenagers themselves to recognize these abusive situations and protect themselves. And then lastly, help survivors and victims who have been abused. Chinyere's NGO has been working primarily with schools to reach out to many young people. She believes this fight should be a social responsibility for everyone. Every parent, every caregiver, even the government, it's everybody rising up so that when abusers are caught, the law enforcement agents do not let them go. They are brought to book and let get to know that, hey, sexual abuse, rape is a crime against the abuser that they should pay for. To people who have been hurt through rape or other sexual crimes, Chinyere has this to say. Release that shame. Release that guilt. Find someone you can talk to. 
return to God and find yourself in him. The abuse does not define you. It hasn't changed the person that the Lord made you to be. It hasn't canceled out your destiny. You still have a hope, you have a purpose, and with the help of the Lord, it will be fulfilled. Forgive yourself, forgive the abuser, let go of the hurt that you may have towards anybody or God or anyone for allowing it happen, and just focus. Tell yourself, this too shall pass. What happened to Chiere was horrible. However, God can put the pieces of our lives back together again. There's a scripture in Isaiah 61, the message version, that says, God sent me to announce the year of his grace, a celebration of God's destruction of our enemies, and to comfort all who mourn, to care for the needs of all who mourn in Zion. Give them bouquets of roses instead of ashes, messages of joy instead of news of doom, a praising heart instead of a languid spirit. God gives beauty for ashes and the scars from Chiri's brutal assault and now the soil that's helping others heal from their wounds. If you've been a victim of sexual assault, I'll also encourage you to talk to someone, a counselor, a pastor, a friend, but let's start by talking to God and we do that through prayer. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and I pray for my brother and my sister, my friends who have been through sexual assault, or been through any sort of assault, physical, mental. I pray for them now that they would know something of liberation from you. I pray that they will know a burden falling from them. They will know peace like they've never done in a long time since they experienced the assault. And also I pray for my friends who don't know you, Lord Jesus. I pray that as they invite you in now, saying these words, you will accept them. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Make me a brand new being, a brand new man, a brand new woman. Wash away my past. Wash away the pain I feel and the, the filth and dirtiness I feel from my experiences. Let me feel clean and whole again. This is my prayer. Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. Amen. If you prayed with me, we'd like to hear from you. During the break, you can find out how to reach us. We'll be right back. They're a trio of dynamic young men who have been singing together for over 20 years. G.I., a.k.a. God's Image, have performed on major stages, including the Apollo, and have shared a stage with the likes of Mary Mary, Shirley Caesar, but their name was inspired by Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 27. Their mission is to see people saved, heal, and draw closer to Christ through their music. Well, G.I., thank you so much for joining us. Wow, thank, you thank you for having us. Brandon, Lamont, yes. and Rufus. Yes, sir. Now, uh, 
I, I noticed earlier on that as we were standing here, uh, Rufus kept disappearing <laughs> to, to the back, and I wondered, is Rufus the member of the group that would, once we're done, he's out of the door? Wow, that is amazing. Him. That is very accurate. <laughs> After every concert, there's two GI members, and they're like, where's the third one? We want pictures, and Rufus is gone. So... <laughs> Rufus, what, what is it? What are you trying to run away from us, man? <laughs> I'm just a homebody. I like to eat and, and then go home and watch TV after we sing. Yeah. Now you know that that's a problem. You say you like to eat. Those of us who like to eat, we uh -huh. grow we grow in, in areas that we're trying to control. And here you are, Mr. Slim. Who <laughs> likes to slowly. It's happening slowly. It's happening slowly. <laughs> now, for over 20 years, you've been singing together. Now, Brandon, I know you're a founding member of the group. Yes. Uh, and your your brothers were part of the group before. Yes. Um, 20, what's kept you going for 20 years? Because most, most people, you know, who do music, especially gospel music, yes. after about you know, 15, 18 years, they'll move to maybe start in a church or go back to a job somewhere. I mean, you, you seldom see those who would do it for 20 years. Yes. I think when God gives you a calling, it's got to be in you as a passion. Mm -hmm. um, it's a passion to go minister week in and week in. It's a passion to see young people, which is a big part of our ministry, come to Christ. Um, when we read a post that says, man, I was thinking of committing suicide, that gives us another year or two encouragement, wow. Wow. you know, but it's been 20 years. Um, we did start very young. So that was part of it, too. <laughs> you know, uh, but, you know, to God be the glory for 20 years. Lamont, for you, uh, the singing, what, what is it that, I mean, definitely your agenda is to see men draw closer to God, yes. to be healed. Uh, what for you are the things you look forward to when you get together with these gentlemen? Because I, I hear you have a reputation as being the United Nations man <laughs> that keeps everyone together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I just, you know, we've been together for so long that these are like my brothers. You know, I have a physical brother, um, but these are definitely my brothers. And I just enjoy, you know, spending time with them and doing ministry with like-minded people. Right. Um, that's, you know, what keeps me enjoyed and happy. Now, now, Rufus, how do you define success? Because I know you, you, uh, you're a technical bud, mm -hmm. so you, you, know, you know music. Mm -hmm. And for pe a lot of people like that, it's, it's either uh, making stuff that's, top of the charts, you know, with the awards and, and the rest. But you still get, at this stage in the ministry, you're still getting people saying to you, oh, GI, I haven't heard about you. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you, and, and I've, 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 I don't see the reaction of, wow, why are you asking me that question? So that means you must define success different from awards. How do you define success? Well, if you if you're in the secular realm, it's a little bit different. You define success by things, by awards. Um, when you're doing what we do, you define it by a whole different set of genre. You define it by what's the, the core, the things you can't always see, the people mm -hmm. that you're helping, the 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 things, the the, the hard work and the nights. And it's not all uh, it's not always about the things that you get, but sometimes it's about just helping people. And that we we got we gain our success from that. So sometimes we look at that. Uh, Brendan, you you talked about uh, uh, messages you might see that juices you keeps you going. Yes. Uh, share some more that you that you've seen as you've traveled along because. Uh, There'll be people who, who we never get to hear their story, yeah. but their story uh, encourages you to keep going. Exactly. Are there some that come to mind that you think, yep, I remember that young lady or that young guy, and this is a story? Wow, it's so many. I remember one post on social media, they said that they didn't really care for gospel music, wasn't looking for it, but they came across our music, and now they're a gospel music lover. Wow. That is one vivid um, memory that I have. Um, like I said before, we had a video years ago called Temptation, and on that post, um, they said they were on their way to commit suicide, but because they heard our music, they reconsidered and wanted to live. Wow. And so no Grammy, whatever, Stella could ever compare to the, the, the fruit of, of true ministry. Mm -hmm. And so that is the reward for us, you know. Um, we are working for, for God, you know. Um, the word says the harvest is ripe. So there's so many people to reach while we can and, you know, why he's given us today, why we need to work while it's day.
So. Now, Lamont, when, when they mentioned temptation, I saw a smile come <laughs> up on your face. So it sounds like you could tell, some, tell us some stories about, about the videos. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, we were always known for being a group that's a little edgy. Okay. And um, in the song Temptation, we talk about real life situations, sometimes situations that the church may shy away from. Right. Um, just because of the subject matter. And when we came out with that video, you know, there was a little controversy, so to speak. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, but, you know, we really wanted to speak to the hearts of people that are struggling. You know, mm -hmm. temptation is something that everybody deals with, no matter how long you've been saved, you know, whether you're in the church or out of the church. Um, so we wanted to really touch the hearts of those people. Well, so, so our time is almost up, but I'm, I'm wondering for, for someone or a group or, or a singer that's been on the journey for a while uh, and feels like they're not actually getting to where they want to get to, what, what can you share as part of your, your experience that could encourage them to keep on? Because I'm sure you didn't arrive at this point where you thought, you know, I'm comfortable with not having awards. I mean, I have some awards, but I'm comfortable with not being the name that people might mention first, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm comfortable with serving God and seeing lives turn around. What point were you able to get to that that can help someone watching right now? Oh, just as you mature and doing this, it's not always going to happen the way that you see it happening. Uh, like I said, I wasn't always in a group, uh, but this has been a place where I've seen the most success has been mm -hmm. in a place where I didn't think it was going to happen. So sometimes you have to just listen to God and follow what he's telling you to do. And sometimes wow. that's not your agenda. And, you, and, and I know you were the one at school that everybody wanted to sing like. Mm -hmm. so, so. That's what I hear. Wow. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on TPI. Thank, thank you for you having us. GI will be joining us on the TPI stage after the break. Stay with us. Your Turning Point experience doesn't have to end when the program is over. Follow us on your favorite social media. come to the end of the show, but I have one final thought. Joy shared is multiplying. Sorrow shared is divided. Don't do life alone. We'll leave you with G.I. singing, I'm ready. From all of us here at TPI, goodbye and God bless. G.I. G.I. This is not the ending, it's only the beginning